come. Herbs freshly picked. Herbs, schmerbs. But how about some Gwent, eh? Unfortunately, I did not get to try the Cyberpunk demo, but on the bright side, I still have interesting stuff to talk about in The Witcher. And so, I'd like to welcome you to a somewhat unofficial episode in the series of things you may have missed in The Witcher 3. This one is mostly your fault, actually. I wanted to end the Blood and Wine series with my previous video, but since you guys have shared a bunch of details that I didn't know about, I couldn't just go on without talking about them. So let me go over a few more interesting things real quick, and hopefully when I'm done, I'll be able to move on from Blood and Wine in peace. Oh, but first, let me remind you that there are at least 20 more episodes in this playlist, and if you've missed any of them, feel free to have a look at the links in the description. And as always, this video will contain absolutely massive spoilers about Blood and Wine, and potentially other Witcher-related things, so be warned. I'm looking for a whore. Okay, that's enough lollygagging, let's get down the list. The first thing you may have missed, brought to you by a gentleman called Sloom, at least I assume it's a gentleman, could be a lady, but regardless, it's about the big game Hunter Quest. You know, the one where you assist this count in taking pictures of various animals. Well, it turns out that he has a unique line if you face towards him when he uses his flash. A folk call witches heartless. This will put the light to that. Oh my! I, I failed to warn you! Apologies! The Paris Dysimac has an added lantern. You must look away or it'll blind you. Paris Dysimac's upset the animals. Better get out of here. Initially, I didn't think much of that because I thought he always says that. At least in my playthroughs, it has always happened. But it seems that I was always looking in his general direction. Because if you look away, as he's taking the pictures, he will not say that. A folk call witches heartless. This will put the light to that. Paris Dysomax upset the animals. Better get out of here. I cannot abide poaching. I'm content you share my love for animals. By the way, I love this quest. Especially the bittersweet twist in the end with his sick daughter. And the duck face, I suppose. Speaking of nature loving, Let's go over to Thing You May Have Missed number 2 and the Mutual of Beauclair's Wild Kingdom quest. Hmm, your coffers. Got a store of sons and husbands in there? I've talked about this one in previous episodes, but there is something else I've never noticed. It is brought to you by a gentleman called Wojtek, I assume, and it's about the outcome where you kill Yokast. Or Yokoko, as he calls her? Yokoko is so very curious. So it turns out that if you wait a few days and come back to her nest, the Count will have already buried her body. Your cast, my poor your cast, cruelly slaughtered like a common beast. There is even a glagolic inscription on her tombstone, which is a little weird though. Um, they must have taken the same one from the sign that warns travelers about the basilisk, because it says, keep out, there be grass dragons. Okay, for number three, we go all the way to the ending and the Night of Long Fangs. I must have done this quest a million times, and yet there is something that I only now realized. First off, Geralt has a couple of unique lines if, during this vampire attack, you try to run away from Beauclair. Gotta get back and stop Deadloff. Can't sightsee, can't get lost. More and more folk dying every minute. Need to tend to the vampires, them and Dedloff. It seems that the area in which you're allowed to go stretches out until and including the Cockatrice Inn, which is also the extent to which Oriana's quest goes. You know, the bridge under which you fight the Alpha Garcane is precisely the one next to the Cockatrice Inn. Ever fight a witcher, you piece of shit? Okay, and the second thing I'd like to talk about here before I move on is... weird. It may just be on my end, but here it is. A viewer by the name of Ellen, you should recognize her by now, claimed that over here, during the Night of Long Fangs, you can find this knight who's fighting a catacan. And if you do not help him, he'll end up dying. But if you do, 
it will actually count towards the Virtues quest about the sword in the lake. I'm walking on water. Just like... <laughs> like who? Like a pond skater. Who are you thinking? Now that is very interesting. However, whenever I go to this place, I just see a katakan there. There is no knight to be found at all. But if I kill the katakan, the knight suddenly spawns out of nowhere and thanks me? The beasts! I could barely see them! Gods, had you not come along, I... So, let me know how this thing works on your end, if anyone has done it before. I'm curious to know. <laughs> Next up, we have another detail about Barnabas Basil Faulty. This one I found myself, but I never really mentioned it for some reason. The first part is that he can introduce himself to you during at least three different points in the story. The first one would be after your first meeting with Detlaf in the barn. The second is if you choose to lift Gontor Odim's curse and take Merlin to Corvo Bianco without previously meeting him. You did the right thing, sir. She should recover quickly here. I'm deeply pleased finally to make your acquaintance, sir, though I do regret the specific circumstances. In all the commotion, I fear I neglected to introduce myself. I'm Barnabas Basil Folti, and by order of the Duchess, I am to surf as your major domo at Corfo Bianco. Nice to meet you, Barnabas Basil. Love to talk more, but got urgent matters to attend to. While I'm gone, please make sure she gets everything she needs. Don't worry, sir, I shall see to everything. Finally, the third is all the way in the end, when you get a visitor, in case you never ever went to Corvo Bianco prior to that point, and if Anna Henrietta died, before you ever met him. Greetings, sir. I am Barnabas Basil Fauti. By order of our dearly departed Duchess, I shall serve you as Major Domo of Corfo Bianco. One last request before you go in to see them. Please come and find me afterwards. I have yet to give you a tour of the estate. And another small thing I wanted to mention is that he has a unique reaction if you abandon him during his tour of the vineyard. And now, sir, allow me to show you a handful of interesting details. Follow me, please. Been a major domo all your life? Yes, I come from a long line of major domos. My father was a major domo, as was my grandfather before him, as was my great aunt. In fact, she was the one to start the tradition. Great aunt? A hard. Ah, oh, how unfortunate. It seems I wearied you, sir. Time has not been kind to Corfo Bianco, but a bit of remodeling should do wonders. If you wish to discuss this further, I shall be in the house. For number five, there are a couple of small details I never mentioned about Regis after the ending. The first one is that he takes pretty much his entire set of lab equipment with him, this is regardless of whether he was banished or not. Which I suppose makes sense, because ultimately, while his clan is from this part of the world, he does not really consider himself a local of this area. If you remember, he didn't even know where the Unseen's lair was. And the other small bit is that in addition to the mutagen contraption that he leaves in your vineyard, he also brings his skeleton with a hat there. Though you probably already knew that. Okay, from here on, we have another bunch of small references and easter eggs that I'll list without giving them numbers, to save up some time. Brought to you by a person called Lars, we have something I've never known before, and it's the fact that Beauclair's palace is very likely inspired by a Hungarian palace called Fisherman's Bastion. Next up, and this has been mentioned by many people, is that the big cemetery in Toussaint, where Regis lives, called Mare Lashes Long or something, is based on the largest cemetery in Paris called something similar but with a P. And speaking of French things, we have another detail that many people over the years have mentioned, and it's about the Paper Chase quest. Turns out it's based on an episode of Asterix and Obelix. Audius, you know, he worked up a nice little business building fire ducks. Well, dear, the last... Excuse me, miss! By Jupiter, how rude people are these days. What do you want? Permit A38. Have you filled in the blue form? The blue form? No. Then how do you think you're going to get permit A38? Next up, brought to you by a gentleman called Luke Dyer, Professor Moreau, who is potentially a mage, 
check my previous episodes if you don't know, is likely based on The Island of Dr. Moreau, a novel by H.G. Wells, which is about a mad scientist who creates human-animal hybrids. Another one, this time by a lady called Duda Marcus, or however that last name is pronounced in French, and it's about Geralt, specifically that his half-naked painting, after you complete the quest Portrait of the Witcher as an Old Man, shows up in Beauclair's brothel. Dearest mommy! The quest itself is once again a reference to a novel called A Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man. Next one is once again by multiple people, and it's that the Knight of Long Fangs quest, or at least the name of it, is a reference to the Knight of Long Knives in German history. What else do we have? Um, brought to you by a gentleman called Shimon Kvasnichka, I think, is something that I've actually known of, but never really made the connection. The brief quest in Beauclair's Catacombs is a reference to Batman. We have an exchange of notes between two people, one of them is called Bruce and the other one Robin. Additionally, there are mentions of a woman called Selina, who has a kitty face, and in the end it turns out her name was Kyle. Okay, next up, by a gentleman called Amir, who told me that the name of a particular brand of wine, which you can find in this expansion, is a reference to one of the largest cities in Iran, called Shiraz, which, just like Beauclair, is famous for its wine, poetry and flowers. Next up, brought to you by arguably the world's biggest Nilfgaardian fan, is that in the quarry, where you take the bovine blues contract, you can find a broken hand meant for Lebioda's statue, with only its middle finger intact. And finally, a couple of things about the Land of Thousand Fables. First off, the red pepper under the bridge. A bridge? Red pepper underneath? Hmm. This has been pointed out by many people as well, and I must admit I didn't initially get the reference, because I never associated this song with its actual title. Anyway, what is hopefully the final final detail in Blood and Wine, for the time being at least, is the magically respawning food. Brought to you by a gentleman called, let's just say Tang, it turns out that the magic food in Longlock's tower actually respawns. It um, expands from nothingness and you can loot it over and over again. Which makes sense, you know, she had to have something to eat up there. And so there we have it. Give the video a like if you've enjoyed it and I thank you very much for everything you've shared with me. This one wouldn't have been possible without you. Also, thanks to everyone for watching and to my supporters on the YouTube membership as well as Patreon. Blood and Wine was awesome, but now it's time to go back. Until the next video, stay tuned and be good. <laughs>